I seek refuge in God from Satan the accursed. In the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful. I offer my condolences <coughs> on the two months of mourning and the reviving of the Hosseini ritual, the two months of Muharram and Safar. I extend my condolences to the position of the last remaining proof of God Almighty, the 12th Imam, the promised Savior, Imam al-Mahdi, may God hasten his reappearance. And I pray to the Almighty God <coughs> for the reappearance of the final avenger of the blood of Imam Hussein, <coughs> peace be upon him. In fact, he is the one who will avenge the entire oppressed nations along the history particularly the believers. And by the reappearance of the promised Savior, Imam al-Mahdi, all nations, particularly the believers, will be saved from all the hardships and problems they are going through. <coughs> this book is the precious book of Kamala Ziyarat. In chapter 88 of this book, the first hadith of this chapter is quite a lengthy hadith. This hadith is quoted from the Holy Prophet of Islam. I will read you only a few lines from this hadith. <coughs> this hadith is about the Ashura of Imam Hussein. And the positive and negative things that will happen after the day of Ashura. This very hadith is being quoted also from Lady Zainab, Imam Sajjad, Umayman, and several other notable figures. And when Imam Ali was martyred, Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, asked from her father about this very hadith which she had, which she had heard from Umayman. In response, the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, said that this hadith is true according to what Umayman said. One part of this hadith reads as follows. Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, read this hadith to Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him. Of course, Imam Sajjad already knew about this hadith, but she reminded him of this hadith 
when the caravan of Imam Hussein's household were being moved away from the dead bodies of the martyrs of Karbala. <coughs> I would try to explain about some parts of this study. <coughs> The Prophet said <coughs> it should be known that the Holy Prophet of Islam is the master of eloquence and every word that he uses is placed in the right position. Those people who are experts of the Arabic linguists, they know it better. This part of the hadith means that after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, <coughs> the Prophet said that after the day of Ashura, until the Judgment Day, there will come a group of people the Prophet did not say that these group of people come inside the land of Karbala he said they come for the land of Karbala So after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, for this land of Karbala will come a group of people. Again, pay attention that the Prophet did not say that there will come a people in the land of Karbala. He said, for the land of Karbala. So when the Prophet is not specifying a, a place for these group of people, in fact, it means that these people are everywhere scattered around the world. And these people uphold a banner in the name of Imam Hussein in which they uphold the rituals of the Master of Martyrs in all corners of this world. It's good to know that in Arabic language even a mountain is referred to as a banner. For the land of Kabbalah, God will choose a group of people who will make this land a banner. And this banner is never going to go away. Just like Imam Hussein, who will live on to the eternity, the banner upheld in the name of Imam Hussein will never come down. And as the hadith goes on, the traditions of Imam Hussein will never die out until eternity.
Then the Holy Prophet of Islam said that in opposition to these holy rituals, there will come a group of people who will try <laughs> nonstop to destroy these rituals. This is what the Holy Prophet of Islam had prophesied. The wording of this hadith is unique and exceptional in the entire a hadith of the Ahl Bayt, peace be upon them. So there will come a group of people in opposition to the rituals of Imam Hussein who will struggle hard with everything they have, with their money, with their power, and with their position. And they will begin their efforts right after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. And they will continue until eternity to spread misgivings and to bother and to downsize or to even torture those who commemorate the rituals and the traditions of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. So there is a constant conflict between these two groups of people. As I already said, the wording of this ahad, uh, this, of this hadith is exceptional. The non-believers would have no issues with Imam Hussein. Those enemies of Imam Hussein are the so-called Muslims. The Jews and the Christians and the Zoroastrians, they were not the people who killed Imam Hussein. The very so-called Muslims, those who practiced Islam, prayed and went to Hajj, those were the people who killed Imam Hussein. And the Prophet of Islam calls the elders and the chiefs of those so-called Muslims the leaders of apostasy. And you can see it today, even those people who try to downsize or spread misgivings about the rituals and traditions of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, they are not non-believers. They are the so-called Muslims. And their followers, as the Holy Prophet of Islam says, they are just the adherents of they are the adherents of those people who are leading them astray. And these two people, they are trying hand in hand to overshadow the rituals and the traditions of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Their only effort is to make sure that the name of Imam Hussein does not ring a bell during the months of Muharram and Safar. They try to do everything in their power to bury the name of Imam Hussein. Over the 1,000 years since the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, these people have been trying nonstop and spending 
huge amounts of revenues and money <coughs> to make sure that they, the name and the traditions of Imam Hussein are buried. However, their efforts are futile because the banner and the name of Imam Hussein is more than ever publicized and his glory is even multifold. You guys can attest to the fact that the rituals and the traditions of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, is constantly and continuously on the rise. Those people who are as, who are as old as me, they can remember this clearly. <coughs> During the years 1370 to 1380 AH, which I can clearly remember, during the time I was 10 to 20 years old, the very famous tradition of commemorating Imam Hussein on the day, on the morning of the day of Ashura, was organized by only seven communities. And 1,000 people at the most were the people who were participating in this a special ritual on the morning of the day of Ashura. The very famous tradition of commemorating Imam Hussein on the day, on the morning of the day of Ashura, <laughs> was organized by only seven communities. And 1,000 people at the most were the people who were participating in this a special ritual on the morning of the day of Ashura. These people started their rituals since the early sunset, sunrise in the day, on the day of Ashura, and they just uh, it was just finished in just a few hours. <coughs> Since 1380 AH, a group of so-called Muslims started discussions saying that this ritual is haram, it is forbidden. Some people say that it is not good for your health. They even spread lies and said that people died during these rituals. As soon as these misgivings started to grow since 1380 <coughs> until 1390, during those 10 years, those seven communities who were uh, commemorating this ritual, they increased to 20 communities. In other words, more and more communities were formed by new people to join these rituals. In 1390, I remember that there were th 33 groups and communities of mourners who performed this special ritual on the morning of Ashura. This was in spite of the fact that so many books and articles and lectures were given on prohibiting this ritual. And usually their logic was terribly flawed.
and now you can see say it for yourself the number is beyond counting There are countless number of people who perform this special ritual on the morning of the day of Ashura. And this is what the Holy Prophet of Islam had prophesied. <coughs> this is true for everything that is related to Imam Hussein. Everything about Imam Hussein keeps growing no matter what. The Holy Prophet of Islam had prophesied that there will come a group of people who will uphold the banner of Imam Hussein and, and in their opposition there will come another group of people who will try to fight the rituals of Imam Hussein. And this is the special thing about Imam Hussein. This could not be said about the Holy Prophet of Islam himself or Lady Fatima Zahra or about Imam Ali peace be upon him. We have never something like this about Imam other holy infallible Imams except for Imam Hussein. This is in spite of the fact that Imam Hussein himself has said that his grandfather the Prophet, his father Imam Ali, his mother Lady Fatima and his elder brother Imam Hassan are superior to him. However this unique special quality is exclusive to Imam Hussein. Those who are experts of the Arabic language, they can fully understand the intricacies of the Hadith which is articulated by the Holy Prophet of Islam. If you and I are successful, we should try to increase and add to what we used to do in order to venerate the rituals of Imam Hussein peace be upon him. The clever person is the one who excels <coughs> at every day. And the one who is at loss is the one who is not better than yesterday and the one who is even worse than yesterday is cursed. This is a hadith. So let's say yes, last year we went to the holy city of Karbala and we commemorated the rituals. This year we have to do more. If you don't have money you can just borrow money. We do borrow money for other trivial things, so why not do this for the rituals and the commemoration of Imam Hussein? We can even lend money to people who are going to travel to the holy city of Kabbalah and commemorate the rituals. And this was the same thing that the holy infallible peace be upon them used to do. The holy prophet of Islam used to borrow money from other people and used to lend these money, this money to those needy people. And for seven years Imam Ali peace be upon him used to pay off the debts of the holy prophet even after the prophet was martyred. Some people say that more than 700,000 people had lent money to the Holy Prophet of Islam and all the money was given to the poor people during the Prophet's life. If you are good at writing, try to do some service to Imam Hussein by your pen. If you have the money, dedicate and donate a part of your money to the rituals and the commemorations of Imam Hussein. You can at least encourage other people to join the rituals of Imam Hussein. 
میتونه قرض کنه گرفت نمیاد تشویق کنه این و اون Kashif Agata is one of the famous and leading Shia Islamic scholars. I had met him in person. Some of his books have been recently published in the cities of Qom and Tehran. Uh, in one of his books, Kashif Agata says that a Christian scholar once told him that <coughs> a Christian scholar had told him that if Imam Hussein belonged to the Christians, they would use Imam Hussein to convert all people around the world into Christianity. In fact, he was saying that you Muslims, you Shia Muslims, do not know the methods and the ways to introduce Imam Hussein to the world. Nonetheless, we can see that the glow and the shine of the rituals of Imam Hussein is growing day by day, year by year. A teacher of Arabic language used to live in holy city of Kabbalah. During the Ottoman Empire, this person was telling a story about the Ottoman Empire. Maybe this is a story dates back to 100 or 150 years ago. One hundred twenty years ago, this person says that he saw almost countless number of people who were going to visit the shrine of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, on the day of Arbain, and the Westerners. Uh, it's estimated that number of pilgrims to be above one million people. And now you can see that this number has grown dramatically. Everyone should contribute to the rituals of Imam Hussein. The business people, the scholars, the family men, everyone can do their part. Little by little we can make this world a big Husseiniya. And Husseiniya is actually the house of Imam Hussein. It's a place where we commemorate Imam Hussein. This world can be a big Husseinia where we honor the name of Imam Hussein as the Holy Prophet of Islam prophesied. Second point is about these two months of Muharram and Safar. Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. If it wasn't for the martyrdom of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura, today, the name of the Prophet of Islam would have not lived on like something that happened to many other messengers. This was what the Umayyad had planned to do. They wanted to wipe out the name of the Prophet of Islam. And the Marwanid and the Abbasid, they also tried to do the same. In particular, Muawiyah promised that he would bury the name of the Prophet of Islam. And Abu Sufyan once visited the grave site of Abu Hamza, of Hamza and he insulted the grave 
and said that we have stolen the government from you people and I'll look back at them what did they do what did they accomplish on the other side we can see that Imam Hussein's name is growing day by day and is becoming more publicized and popular among all groups of people of course there are here and there groups of people who speak against Imam Hussein however they add nothing but glory to the name of Imam Hussein there are even people who deny the entire story that happened in the land of Karbala they said this is some fictitious story during the two months of Muharram and Safar everyone should do their part the scholars the academics the religious speakers the reciters the writers everyone should try to introduce Imam Hussein peace be upon him to the entire world and through the name of Imam Hussein 